What's up, fam? Welcome back to the Time Is Ripe podcast. It's season three. Ladies and gentlemen, here on the Time Is Ripe, feels good to be in uh, chapter three of this illustrious podcast. Uh, the Time Is Ripe is a podcast of Ripe Creatives. Ripe Creatives is a ministry based in the great city of Philadelphia. We leverage the arts for the purpose of missions and outreach, community transformation initiatives, all the good things. Um, we basically just try to do stuff through the arts to make an impact on other people's lives. And uh, this podcast is where we go back in time to discuss events that happened within the Ripe community, um, events that we produced or events that we got booked for and went to and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we go date by date. And today, to launch off into season three of The Time is Ripe, we have an amazing, amazing episode for you. Uh, I will say this up front. This is probably going to be a two-parter episode where we're going to break this thing down over this episode and the one to come. Um, so if you're here and you feel like we we go off a cliff at the end, that's because there's a second part coming and uh, be on the lookout for that. But today we're talking about something extremely special. It is our first ever Write Poetry Tour, which we entitled Pass the Mic. It was amazing. It was a four-day tour. The dates were January 17th through January 20th, 2024. And to break this whole thing down, four of the five people who are part of this shenanigan are in the room. Uh, introducing them from my left to my right uh, on this audio podcast, you don't know where they are. But uh, first up, returner to the pod. She's amazing. We affectionately call her the goat. Uh, Sir Jean, welcome back to the pod. Hey, y'all. How you doing? It's good to have you back, Sir Jean. Uh, you can check out the Two Lines episode from season two. It was fantastic. And, uh, you know, you can hear even more about Sir Jean's heart. Also on this podcast today about the Pass the Mic Right Poetry Tour, we got another returner, Mr. AVG. What's good, y'all? Welcome back, AVG. Always brings the energy, you know, to every podcast he's on. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be a good time tonight. Finally, our our last person on this particular episode as we talk about Pass the Mic, Mr. Free to Poets himself, a.k.a. Greg Snow. Welcome back to the podcast. Hey, Free to Poets. It's good to be back. The four of us are going to have a blast talking about this amazing tour. Now, one thing I do need to say is that we have a fifth person that's not on today's episode. Um, that was a part of the Pass the Mic tour with us, and that is Miss Spoken Poet, a.k.a. Jayla Powers. Mm -hmm. um, we love her to life. She's in the faraway lands of Baltimore, so it's a little bit harder for her to get here to record today's episode. Yeah. Uh, but Jayla got to be a part of the tour with us. Um, she actually ended up having some deaths in her family, which was super sad and heavy, which we'll talk about in our next episode uh, a little bit more. Um, so Jayla wasn't able to be with us for through the first three dates on tour, but she was with us for the fourth. And so we'll talk about her a lot more on the next episode about this. Now, overview, January 17th to January 20th. It was a four-date run. Uh, we went to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We went to Indiana, PA, not Indiana State. Uh, those are two different places. And then we went to a little town called Newcastle, Pennsylvania, and we came back to Philadelphia. Um, those were the four dates, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're talking about. Now, before we get into the actual tour, let's talk about the background. What do you guys remember leading up to us actually like deciding we're going to go on tour? Because I think there's a lot of beauty in that whole conversation. I remember... Talking with Scott on the phone, usually as most of our crazy, wacky ideas start, is a phone call between me and Scott. And we had thrown around ideas of, let's do a tour. And then the idea, you know, became a little more substantial. We started talking about a little more, walking things out, saying, oh, we might have, we could maybe go to different places. Like, we have some some connections. And then we brought it to the rest of the team at the ripe retreat and kind of in our in our very um, very established long 10 minute meeting, we uh, <laughs> talked through the idea of doing a tour. Mm. Yes. That was, that was shade on that 10 no, minute meeting. No, it was definitely a 10 minute meeting that we like had to, well, Greg had to fight for. 
Mm. Um, but yeah, no, no I, we did. We we fought yeah, for we that together. Yeah, we all were like, come on. That was like, solidarity. We came out here. We spent the whole day. Like you, you could at least give us ten minutes. But um, <laughs> I remember that. And then I think what follow up, like maybe a few weeks later, I just was like, okay, y'all blowing up the chat again. Here we go. Mm. It's like a thousand and who knows one messages, and I'm like, all right, like what's good? Like can somebody just give me a recap because I don't got time to read all this. Yes. And then um. I remember that's when I think uh, Greg, Greg usually is the one who gives me recaps and he was like, well, this is what they're thinking. And, you know, Red Line has suggested this. And I was like, OK, sounds interesting. Um, I was like, I like y'all. I don't really know if I want to be in a group with y'all yet, but I was like, let me think about it. Um, <laughs> but outside of that, I started to see like how the planning was going. And I was like, oh, this looks like something that not only can happen, but it felt like, OK, it feels really purposeful. And I think before I sign up with it for anything, it needs to be purposeful and like ministry, le- you know, led. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The big, the big thing was at the at the retreat when we had that ten minute meeting. It was supposed to be an hour. They're they're clowning me because it ended up being ten minutes because we ran late on everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to hear more about that retreat, we actually have an episode about the ripe retreat. Uh, it was a fantastic two days together, but ripe poetry got the short end of the stick. Okay. And uh, but in that ten meeting, ten minutes, I think we were as effective, if not more effective, than any of our hour, hour and a half long meetings that we had with any of the other teams. Mm-hmm. And that's just the nature of this community with the you know the four of us, five of mm-hmm. us with Jayla. Um, we're very like efficient whenever we start doing something. Like it really comes to fruition fast. Yeah. Yeah. And it just felt like a tour was the next natural step for us to take in light of how consistent we had been with our own gifts, Mm -hmm. how consistent we had been going to other people's events and how consistent we were growing in our crafts. It was like, man, I think we maybe have something. Now I will say at the Ripe Retreat, I thought this would be further down the line. Same. Mm -hmm. I thought we weren't really ready to go on tour Mm -hmm. at the Ripe Retreat, but it seemed like a cool idea to start to flesh out. Sure. And then as you said, uh, Red Lion, shout out to Red Lion. Um, he's out in Houston. Um, Ripe Retreat was in mid-May. End of May, I go to Houston, perform there for a few days, meet this guy named Red Line, yeah. who is arguably top three Christian poets in the country, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't even know who you would put over him, to be mm-hmm. honest. Like That's how talented he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He saw my stuff by the grace of God in person, but then he saw all of your guys' stuff um, online, and he was like, you guys should go do a tour. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, if one of the best of the best is saying this, we should probably listen. And I think that was the impetus to maybe start the planning process. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. That conversation was, uh, yeah, just very affirming. You know, you you mentioned already that um, in twos or threes or fours, we were going to open mics, um, Sir Gene, Jayla Scott, like y'all came to Two Lines and featured Greg uh, that same December, featured at Two Lines and like really showed us, me personally, I think he showed us something really, really different and skillful. Um, It just started to make a lot of sense that we should try to do something all together. Yeah. And so that started really in the summer. Like, what if we went on tour? What would this look like? And then our thought, um, all four of us was like, let's not do something that's going to cost a lot of money. Let's not do something that's going to have a lot of expenses tethered to it. Let's do something local just using our friends. And I don't mean using them in a detrimental way like mm-hmm. or a negative way, but I'm saying asking for them to help us put something together. Yeah. And so the thought was, okay, if we go to a city that nobody knows who we are or a town or like how do we get to do what we do in front of people actually there that have no context for who we are. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of started thinking through what would it look like to have local features at each of the events that could in some ways be the draw, but also as an empowering thing to elevate the voices of others, right? Because that's kind of a huge part of Ripe's DNA as a whole, yeah. but especially us as Ripe Poetry, we never want it to be about us and our little show. Sure. And I think we've seen on a national scale, no shade intended, but other poetry movements that have gone city to city to do shows 
and you wonder what is the local investment after that event happens, Mm -hmm. who are you empowering locally Mm -hmm. to stand in your place when you dip to the next place? Mm -hmm. Because you're only in town for 24, 48 hours and then you're gone. So how are you empowering others? Um, I mean, I got to go be a part of a national tour where I felt like that was a big wrestle for me. We're gone in 24 to 48 hours. What have we done to empower the voices of the local that you're leaving when you're gone? And so I think that also bled into the second half of the design, um, which was the open mic side. I mean, we we do open mics a lot in the city. And um, I think a lot of tours in multiple genres you don't often see people then passing the mic to, no pun intended, pun intended, to other people um, just in the audience, you know, and creating a less consumeristic culture, but more of a participatory culture, which is us as humans. Like, that's just what we want to do. People that don't write poetry, we're very much about getting people involved, not about just creating a platform for people to see us perform. Yep. And so that was the thought, was let's do an open mic to start every show on tour. Let's have a local feature feature at every stop of the tour and then we'll do a set um, together. And so that's that's kind of the backstory, I think, um, for all this stuff. And then shout out to the people who made it possible. Um, Greg, your dad in Harrisburg. Shout out, dad. Uh, Shout out to Sammy Jammer in Indiana. Um, Shout out to City Church, Pastor Josh Watts in Newcastle. And then, of course, E. Daniels, the Ernie Daniels imagination of Christ Community Church in Philly. That that became kind of the four people that gave us the thumbs up for us to start dreaming. And uh, so, yeah, all fall we're kind of locking in venues, locking in the local features and all that kind of stuff and trying to create something entirely new. Now, let's talk about the tour, guys. I think we've set the stage pretty well. Um, Wednesday, January 17th. We meet up here at the crib, and we get in the car, and we begin this journey to the faraway lands of Harrisburg, PA, um, for night one of Pass the Mic, Write Poetry Tour. What are your guys' thoughts going into us getting in the car and going on this thing? Like, what was going on in your heads right there? I think, I was just like, all right, I don't know what to expect when we get there. But um, I think by the time we actually arrived... I like the fact that we all collaboratively work together to just create the setting and the tone for like what the experience was going to be that night. And the Mm -hmm. fact that we were able to collaborate and just bring our minds together and like, all right, how do we want to set the tables, the chairs, and how do we want to, you know, make people feel welcomed and invited? I thought that was just a really great way to start. Yeah. I mean, I was uh, excited, nervous. Um, curious about even, you know, that day it was, it was really icy in Philadelphia. So it was, there was a lot of questions of what is this tour going to look like even as we're off, you know, and how are we going to, are we going to be okay? You know, um, are we going to hit any storms and, and just kind of thinking about that as we, you know, got on the road or you're like doing something, you know, you're kind of usually worried about what's happening in the present and what's kind of leading up to getting on the road. But I think once we got on the road and got out to the Center Street Grill, um, shout out Center Street Grill. Thanks for having us, even though it was wing night. Um, it was a it was a good time and able to get us together in there and just kind of be like, oh, like we're here. And even being there like early, just kind of like it built up the like tension of like, oh man, like this is about to happen. You know, it'd be a little different if we just walked in and it was like 15 minutes later, like you had no time to think about it. You're just like, you got to go. It was like just meditating and thinking and being like, oh, like this is going to happen. I need to be ready and and we're about to do this. People are going to come in. Many people that even I I personally knew um, and and we need to be ready for what we're going to do. Yeah, I think for me, I needed some time to really think about it. Um, I was, I was really excited um the the week that we did the tour was a week before classes and that's like prime time for people kind of working um in higher ed like staff um so it was a kind of big investment for me to kind of prioritize the tour um and like jump right into like the first week of classes afterwards but like so worth it um it was a big opportunity to spend time with uh, Scott, Greg, and Sergene. 
um, have some one-on-one -on -one conversations, just really get more comfortable with y'all kind of being in your space and being together. Um, so yeah, that was like a really, a really important um, aspect of the tour for me personally. Yeah. Super life-giving to just be on the road together. Mm -hmm. Like as somebody who's been on tour with other ripe artists in the past, a hundred percent, that's what we would all say was the best part of it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the shows. It wasn't even the ministry part of it. Like those things are beautiful, but the best part is just being on the road together yeah. because there's just certain conversations you don't have until you're in that environment. Mm -hmm. You know, like family night is amazing and it's great, but there's 3,500 people and we're like coming off of work and people are tired and people are dealing with the damage of the weekend or whatever, or what's yeah. ahead in their week. Like it's a lot of stress, but mm -hmm. dedicated time, like 96 hours or 108 hours, whatever it is, we're just going to be together. And our only focus is on being together, That's doing good. this thing creates a lot of like intimacy and vulnerability right off the rip. Yeah. And then the dependence upon God for the ministry to matter when you're on the road mm -hmm. yeah. also creates a level of vulnerability even to another level. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, that, that's the like environment that we're showing up to Harrisburg in. And it's a lot of laughter, a lot of storytelling, a lot of, you know, updating each other on each other's lives. Mm -hmm. And a lot of like, is anybody going to come tonight? Fear, you know, like, because you <laughs> yep. just don't know. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like none of us were known in Harrisburg other than Greg. So we're like, are people going to show up to this thing? I mean, Sweet. some people registered to come, but are they going to you know, show up, especially with the weather and all that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. And getting to set up the space together, Serging said, was like super fun. Mm -hmm. we're, there's some videos from that that oh, yeah. made me laugh. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Center Street Grill, like shout out to them. They didn't know us from a can of paint. Mm -hmm. And they were willing to let us come on a night where they're packed for wing night yep. and still let us be up there. Shout out to the waitress. She is a trooper. Yes. That's all I can say. Leslie. Leslie. Good. Shout out to yeah. Leslie. Shout out to her. She was, man, she's a trooper. Absolutely. Leslie, we got to get you this podcast because you were the truth. Absolutely. Um, shout out to you. She was like so just like, I didn't know if it was a big thing, a little mm -hmm. thing. Like we didn't know what was going on. And they just like bent over backwards to make everything great for us. Absolutely. She even came up and took people's orders upstairs yes. while they had yeah. a packed house downstairs. Yes. Um, shout out to them. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, really, really great experience going into night one. Um, now doors open at six 30. Want to shout out top mob productions who produces these podcasts. He actually yeah. drove out from Philly yep. to be there to set up sound for us what a guy. at the restaurant and shout out to DJ and G who came out and DJ for us as well. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you guys for being there, Jared. We really appreciate it. Um, we're all set up six 30 PM. We've eaten a bunch of wings which is probably a terrible decision, but we did it anyway. <laughs> and um, doors open. People actually started coming, y'all. They were yeah. there. We were shocked. Yeah. People came early, which is like, I'm sure in most places in America, that's probably not like a big deal. But when you're in Philly and then you like, and then you go somewhere else and people show up early, you're like, what is happening? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we must be a big deal. Yep. People are here like 15 minutes before the show starts. The room is about to be full. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it did. It did fill out. I mean, every table was full and a lot of the chairs were as well, mm -hmm. um, which was really, really crazy for us as people who nobody knows us yeah. by name. But the, the, the energy of like pass the mic. Mm -hmm. Oh, what is this? Like, they're going to pass the mic to each other. They're going to pass the mic to this local feature. They're going to pass the mic to us as the audience. Yeah. A lot of poets showed up to want to perform and yeah. then their friends to see them. Yeah. And some people ultimately, I think, got exposed to us as well, which was kind of the whole goal um, as people who don't have clout in like a name recognition. Yeah. How do we engage an audience bigger than our own um, when you don't have one, you know? Yeah. And I think it was just a genius way to do it. Let's just talk about the night real quick. Like the open mic starts it. Greg's our MC for the open mic. Shout out to Mr. Two Lines uh, host himself. He took the Two Lines hosting on the road on the Pass the Mic Right Poetry Tour. So talk to us about the open mic, Greg. Yeah, man. The open mic was super cool um, just to see like who actually got up there. Um, shout out to Dana Kinsey, man. Like she was just... Um, such an amazing poet getting to see her perform and 
She's one of the first people, I believe, on the open mic, mm-hmm. and that was dope to see her kick it off and might even have a, a story about her later mm-hmm. um, in the podcast. But just, she was awesome. Um, James Axel is a good friend of mine. Bro, that dude killed and poet, it. poet, and he went in on this piece where, like, you think he's talking about his relationship, and all of a sudden you realize it's actually about Joseph and mm-hmm. Mary yeah. and the baby Jesus. Yeah. And he put it in a way that's, like, so down-to-earth, practical, but powerful yeah, for sure. um and another person i want to highlight is my friend david who i have not physically seen since we were in high school um upwards of six six seven years ago and so to go from that to him just showing up to something that i was doing in a random place and then getting on the open mic um and hearing that he's been doing poetry and um He's somebody that that doesn't know the Lord Jesus. And so even just to get to have a conversation with him after him getting on the mic was like super cool um, to have him on there. So the the open mic for me was just awesome. It was this mix of like people that are like diehard poets and then people that are just like getting started and trying to explore what poetry looks like or even people that just enjoy poetry. Yeah. I think what stood out to me, it was a lot of different uh, poets and you can tell like um, everyone had their own lane and their own like style of writing. Um, And it was just good. I think overall, I remember one poet that stood out to me. What was his name again, Craig? David. David. Yeah. He was pretty dope. Um, He kind of took a turn in his piece that I didn't think was going to happen. And it was like (laughs) hilarious. Um, And it was about his iPhone, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was about his iPhone. And I was like, oh, this is like a really clever piece. And it definitely, I was engaged. So that really stuck out to me. Absolutely. I I would agree with David's piece. And um, coming back to James Axel, just Mm -hmm. I find poetry that has that really interesting like twist and shift, really, really engaging. Um, And I just appreciate like the different eras of poetry that we Mm -hmm. saw too. Um, Like you mentioned, diehard poets, like poets who've been in the game for like 30 years and then people who are just coming into the space as well scott i'm drawing a blank but um but she was a poet and she had the hummingbirds that was playing in the background when she was doing her joy joy Joy, of course joy that was such a treat like um even her just having that hummingbird in the background and her just like sharing i think it definitely created an experience yeah, shout out to freaking Joy. Yeah, Ike. Joy. Yes. Um, Joy's actually working on our new website yeah. that, Thank Lord you, willing, will be up by the time this podcast is up. Don't <laughs> quote me on that. Shout out, Joy. Uh, but she's been working on our website, and um, Joy's an old friend. And so, just to kind of name this, I am doing spoken word poetry right now in large part because of Joy Ike. Whoa. Um, when I f- wrote my first piece, in 2010, she heard it and said, my platform is your platform. Mm. If I'm performing anywhere and you're there, you're doing a spoken mm. word. Mm. Um, when I was a literal, like just starting, I had one piece. I think it was trash looking back on it. God used it like profoundly, but she heard one piece and was like, anytime I'm performing, you get the mic. Mm. And um, that's where I got my start. Like most of my early performances were on stage with Joy Ike at random coffee shops. So in like a small way to give her the microphone back for spoken word. Hey. She's a phenomenal singer songwriter, yeah. but she is also a phenomenal poet mm. and really in- interesting and unique in her delivery and her writing and the way she uses her voice and yeah. resonance. Yeah. Um, she's amazing, but she's kind of been like, on the low as a poet. Mm. And so for us to like pass the mic to have Joy Ike as one of the first open micers on it was so stinking special to me. That's good. um, Specifically. And I think everybody else enjoyed her as well. She killed it. Shout out to Joy Ike. That's good. After the um, the open mic, um, shout out to every every artist that was on it. Uh, We went into the the local feature. And um, also shout out to Leslie. I think that was around the time that she smacked her head on that wall. Bro. I didn't think he was going to go there, but okay. That's why I said shout out to her earlier. I just didn't want to put her on blast, but okay. Yo, that was crazy. She was like running all these food everywhere, mm-hmm. and there was like this one part of the wall that stuck mm-hmm. out, and I swear she got a concussion and kept it moving. It was reckless. Brazilian. Yeah. 
She's very resilient. The way she kept moving, yeah. I was like, this, ha- this has happened to you before. Mm. Yeah, she said like, it has. She, yes. she, she said knew it, it had. Yeah. She, um, like she put the tables that like right there to make sure she avoids. Yeah. yeah. But we moved the so table. We go there next year. We ain't moving them tables. Yeah. yeah. We're going to keep you <laughs> safe, Leslie. Mm-hmm. We're going to keep you yeah. safe. Uh, but right around that time, <laughs> Keith Snow gets introduced by his son, Gregory Snow. And uh, yeah. Talk to us, Greg. I mean, this is your dad. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because a little over a month before that, at Two Lines in Philadelphia, uh, I was featured and my dad um, was a part of the the crew of my dad and my mom introducing me into my feature. Mm. So it's kind of cool poetic justice to then have me introduce him at the next one. And um, this is just something that we have been doing for a long time, my dad and I, like he'll have a show and I'll get up there or, you know, and say my joy Ike was somebody that put you on. I mean, my dad literally in many ways put me on, Mm -hmm. you know, like I'd be in his features and I'd be doing these things. So to see him in this context uh, with people, you know, both of us knew Uncle James was there, a lot of great people. And just to have him um, doing a set that is even more spoken word heavy than maybe he always does. He's definitely um, a poet that has a lot of written pieces Um, and some of them can be spoken word. And so for him to do more performance was really cool. And also like, just, I mean, dad, I hope you hear this, you know, like his evolution as a poet in terms of, um, explicitly talking about what Christ has done in his life, in his poetry. He's always done that. You know, we've done poems for churches. We've done different things like that, but to, to make, you know, kind of poems that can hit the open mic, but are also explicitly about just what God has done. Um, I remember the the piece, he's, you know, I've heard it many times, um, but just this piece about having a dream and he wakes up and and hearing that the Jesus is calling you and and it is time to 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 come to come to him. And just in a very raw, um, innocent and just like like grabbing way of just writing that saying like, it's not just a a testimony or evangelistic piece, but just saying like, Hey, like, like God's calling you and he, he wants, he wants you to know how much he loves you and, and wants to call you out of whatever you're, you're struggling in. And, and so, um, shout out to snow, um, for an incredible feature as he, as he always does, he doesn't disappoint. And that was very touching for me. I could tell you looked really proud and it was nice to see you in your hometown. You know, like just being able to like pay homage to your dad and him being able to share his gift and the fact that you've learned from him. I thought that was like really dope to see that through your lens because you've always talked about it. Mm -hmm. But to actually be in Harrisburg and experience it, I was like, okay, I get it. Like, Yeah, I mean, your dad, your dad was a really, really warm person to the people who are just showing up. Yeah. Um, Really warm to Leslie as well. Um, and I think in his in his feature, there was a lot of warmth there too. Um, he featured he featured at two lines. Um, was it like two years before or the, the yeah like a year, year and a half ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that feature compared to this one was definitely different too. Um, yeah, just a really really good guy. Yeah, and I think he models what. I think it's really cool about believers as they grow and have a gift is he models this like, you know, he's been doing poetry for 20 years, but if a group of like four people, you know, and son, including it, has just been doing poetry for a little bit, or like, hey, we're doing this tour. He's not like, oh, what is it going to be like? What about this? He's like, I'm down. I'm there. You know, and just to say that I'm available to whatever you guys need and I'm available to to coach, to tutor, like he does stuff with high schoolers, he does stuff with middle schoolers. He's just like using the gift to say I'm, I'm available for whatever God wants me to do. Yeah. I think that's a model for us as we continue to grow and mature in our gifting. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, and not only that, but the venue itself. Yeah. Right, like there's yeah. without your dad, we don't have a show in Harrisburg. Mm-hmm. Facts. He called. He pretty much pulled the strings, and 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 all of his connections were always my connections, but they became my connections in a very real way. Of like, if I needed something, I called this person. They know who I am, and they would just instantly like fall down and be like, "What do you need? I'll call this person. I'll call that person. I'll call this person." And so, yeah, I think I realized like how much. Harrisburg arts clout like my dad actually has. <laughs> it's just like, yo, like 
He run the city for real. <laughs> <laughs> He's the mayor, man. He's the mayor. <laughs> He's definitely the mayor, Mr. Networker himself. We all have something to learn there. Um, shout out to Snow. After the feature, we got into the first of four write poetry sets. Yeah. The squad, uh, myself, AVG, Sergene, and Greg Snow. Um, we did something really unique on this tour that I think is going to probably mark a little bit of how we would do this type of thing forever yeah. because it was so stinking good. And that is that we did an overlapping set, an interwoven set. Um, so what we didn't do is AVG does 15, Greg does 15, Sergene does 15, I do 15, and we do our own 15-minute sets. We went piece for piece and not even round robin where it was always Sergi and AVG, Greg Scott, Sergi and AVG, Greg. No, we, we designed sets based upon the pieces that we wanted to do and what pieces were in our communal arsenal would fit before and after each piece. And we told a story through the set every single night of the tour, a different story mm. with different pieces yes. and different overlapping ways of doing that. Yep. Um, it was so good, guys. Yes, yes. Um, I loved every aspect of our Write Poetry sets every night, but especially Harrisburg was so sweet and so special as the first one. Mm. Talk to me about the set from your guys' perspective. I'm going to need a reminder on who went first. I went first, I think, with State of Mind. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was, that was a really, really good moment because... And we'll probably hear about this later. We we decided we kind of have to stage when Scott runs back his piece. Yeah. Um. I don't know if you want to like tell people how states works, Scott. Yeah, give it away. Yeah, <laughs> give it away, give it away, give it away now. Um. So yeah, it's a piece that runs through for like three and a half minutes one way, and then there's kind of this moment where for the sake of king and country, I'll run it back. Mm -hmm. And you do the same piece, but all 50 states were actually layered into the piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, phonically, you know, you just don't notice it at all um, the first time through. So it's kind of like a, wait, what? Yeah. Kind of moment in Absolutely. the piece that we just felt like would be a cool opener yeah. from the sense of like, oh, snap. Like, what's happening? Who exactly. are these people? This should be fun. Yeah. Um, you know, it has like a message in it, but it's not as weighty of a message as a lot of the other pieces that you guys would do afterwards, mm -hmm. but it felt like a good place to start. Absolutely. And so what AVG's referring to is like in the middle of the poem, we staged everybody on our team as well as uh, your dad and then a couple other people yelling like, run it back, run it back. And it kind of created like a palpable moment for the run back of the second half of the piece again. So yeah. it was kind of fun. That was super cool. Yeah. Just definitely grabbed everyone's attention. Yeah. I think that was a really, really good way to start the tour because we were like going to four different cities within a state of Pennsylvania. So it really made sense to begin that way. Um, Sky is just like an excellent performer. So it, it was good to have him um, start us off. Um, I think like track reference, right? Like you, you put your one of your best people first to like get the race started really well. Um, I'm trying to remember who was next. So we go from state of mind. Uh, I think to surging was was up yeah. right after, and all tour, not just this show. Uh, surging changed her poem. 95% of the time. Whatever was Every listed time. on the list that she was doing, she changed it to something else the hey. whole time. But it worked. It really it, did. It always works, Sergi. Mm -hmm. It worked. You, you be blessed by the Holy Spirit. Hey. Even we were surprised, everything. so it worked out. Everybody's like, oh, I didn't know she's going to do this. But like, yeah, me neither. <laughs> Absolutely. She's like, and home alone. <laughs> mm. I think it was the feel of the room and just kind of where we were in the moment. I was like, all right. And I was honestly, I wasn't trying to do that piece at all. This story. Mm. I know she she put Home Alone not on any of the nights of all tour. She yeah. ended up doing it every night, I think. I think yeah, except almost. for Philly, maybe yeah, yeah, like almost Philly. every night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just crazy. It was wow. very theatrical set. Like we kind of mm. just kept rolling. I think in the beginning we were kind of getting our feet under us of like, okay, like who goes next, and we got to get up there, and like, and then like we just kind of were rolling after that point where we had these cool. I mean, it was always fun, like 
uh, partner with AVG in these mm. pieces because AVG and I would just like bring the whole room down <laughs> and then like Scott and Sergi would bring it back up. But oh, it's like really man. crazy. We would just bring these really in, like deep pieces and then and then they could bring it all back up and make it all good and fun again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's the power of not doing a round robin setup not doing everybody does 15 minutes and then you move on to the next person. It really gives you an opportunity to share something really dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I think we all have in some ways like our wheelhouse when it comes to like the tone or the dynamics of the poetry we offer. Um, and yeah, I mean, bring, being able to bring all of that together, I think gave people um, an experience that would have been, it just wouldn't have been as good. Yeah, it, what we did, I think, was one of one. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it was not able to be replicated because we are all very unique and yeah. we are all very different. Mm -hmm. And I, to me, I'm like, I would never want to do this any other way mm -hmm. because of how special it was. Um, and, and I also think there was some beauty in getting to give your all and then sit down. Yes. Yeah. Instead of give your all, take a breath, give your all, take yeah. a breath, give your all, like... Yep. It's an exhausting way to perform. Yes. Whereas verses like you could sit down, take a sip of water, listen to some of these other pieces, maybe hear from the Lord like Sergene mm. to change your entire set. Amen. Right? Like change every piece. <laughs> it's not um, the entire set. It's where I feel like, you know, what's palatable and what makes sense. Cause like <laughs> I think so. depending on the piece in between like certain sets, it's like, oh, okay, like where is the audience at like now? Like, okay, mm. what seems like not palatable, but in some ways, like, what can they really take in? So I think yeah. that's kind of where it was. Yeah. Every change made perfect sense. It was just funny because we spent days coming up with these <laughs> set lists and then she just threw them out they the window. Changed, but, right. uh, it was good to, like, see what the audience was doing because, like, mm -hmm. us in Harrisburg, half of our audience was, like, very familiar with poetry. Probably half our audience was not. Mm -hmm. So... I think that was really cool to see, okay, like these these guys over here, they're 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 locked in, but these guys, they might need a little more encouragement right now. They might need something else. And so by our set kind of ebbing and flowing, like it gave like the 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 spots where people are feeling like really intense. All right, now we're gonna take a breather. All right, now we're gonna go back in, For you sure. know, and or this one's gonna be much more technical with more wordplay, or this is gonna be very straightforward. Yeah, I think as you guys said, I mean it just ebbed and flowed really well. Um, it gave different dynamics piece to piece. Mm -hmm. Everybody killed it. Um, I just want to spend a little bit of time shouting out Greg mm -hmm. in particular mm -hmm. because this was, to me, hands down the best performance of Greg Snow's uh, illustrious poetry career that I've seen. That's good. Um, and this was coming off of, as you said, the two lines in December, mm -hmm. which everybody was super excited about how he did there. I felt like January 17, 2024 was like peak Greg Snow uh, sure. performance in Harrisburg. Sure. Uh, like we were all like, yo, Greg is on one right now. He was. I, I wonder if it's because like you were, you know how teams have like a home court advantage? I wonder if that helped to really mm -hmm. get you in your bag. And just really be able to bring out the pieces, um, both like the the technical aspects of it, but also the stories that you were trying to tell in your pieces. So I, that's what I think. Like you had home court advantage. Yeah, I would say I felt a lot more of your heart in those moments. Um, I Not to say that you don't connect with them any other time, but I just felt like you were a lot more open and you... I think you. I think there was that excitement, like a little kid, you know, that goes to like, like, oh, let's, there goes those my mom, there's my dad, or whatever. Mm. Um, I think it was a def, definitely a sense of pride that you felt there, and um, the space was so warm and inviting because they knew you, and yeah. so I think you were there and you were like, yo, I'm on this, mm -hmm. and I thought that was dope. Like you owned the moment, and um, it was good to see because in, in so many ways I've watched like your growth. Yeah. And just like how you're really in this space of just being Greg and That's like, good. it's dope. I, I really like Harrisburg taught me a lot about you, mm. not just the poetry, but you. And I think I saw, I saw it come together like 
just effortlessly. And Absolutely. that was dope. Like, I literally was like, when me and Scott was like, should I tell him now? I was like, no, nah, let's wait. <laughs> and then it wasn't until like we got down the steps and was like, no, nah, let's just let him know now. Like, mm. it was it was incredible. I, I mean, yeah. it's definitely constant reassurance and like encouragement because um, as an artist, like you go through so many waves of like, am I enough? Am I doing well? Do I, like, is what I'm doing matters? And not necessarily like a, oh, like, should I stop writing? But it's just always you're wondering, like, am I making an impact? And you might even be feeling like that in life where you're just like, am I making an impact? And so I think the encouragement constantly, like, hearing, yo, you you are doing this, you are doing this well. Um, and even to what you're saying of, like, this, like, home field advantage or as I reflect back, like there were a good chunk of people in that room that I've known for a long time, but have never heard me personally in like person. They never heard me live perform poetry. Yeah. So that was like huge where it's like I get to like show these guys um, and, and feeling very proud of where I am and, and confident in where I am as a performer and, and how I've gotten to grow and how a lot of these pieces um, are not just pieces for me that are, are designed to to get people to like ch- clap or cheer or feel good but pieces that are me and that are experiences I really had or mm. things that I've wrestled with and then and then bringing that out to people sure. um, and getting them to wrestle with them too so yeah I mean I'm, I'm just waiting excited to see what what God's mm. doing but I definitely appreciate you guys calling it out right because it's it's one thing to hear somebody say, oh, you did a good job. But the people that you know very well and have watched you grow and have watched you every step of the way, have seen you on your bad days, have seen you on the, the times where you could have done better and are saying, no, like this, this was really good. And also like I wasn't necessarily walking away feeling like I've done the best I ever did. Mm. I like thought it was good, but I was just like, oh, like. I don't know. This is just what we do. So I think it was really cool to then you guys be like, oh, no, this is the best you've ever done. And I'm like, really? Uh, No idea. So that's cool. I'd say hands down. (laughs) Like it was like a whole different level. Yes. Um, And it was it was such a joy uh, to have that happen. Mm -hmm. And I think a grace from the Lord. Right. Because it's really not even in our control. A lot of times you can just have like a mental funk uh, I missed that line and I can't remember and I'm stuck like, or, and a distraction happens in the room or the power goes out in the venue. Like anything can go wrong to make the story different. And God, I felt like just protected the whole set and protected your performance, especially, which I think generated a great deal of opportunity for impact beyond the set. Mm -hmm. So when we were done with our, you know, communal set and you know the last piece gets performed which was greg doing i write yeah. um which was a part of like what made it so special was yes. like the, getting to end with this piece that is very much like his braggadocious piece you for know sure, for sure. and uh into like a really intimate as poets let's make an impact let's not do this for clout let's do this for impact yeah. Yeah. and then the room is set yes for that literal thing that he just said to happen, <laughs> yes. yeah, was like, "Yo, this is so good." That's poetry, and uh, <laughs> it was poetry. Like it really was poetry, it was. Mm. and um, it felt like, man, God, we are His poem, right? We are His workmanship, yep. mm-hmm. created in Christ Jesus to do good works that He prepared in advance. Mm. When the show wrapped up, the workmanship created in advance to step into some stuff yes. happened for the next 35 45 minutes Absolutely. after the show was over. Yep. That's when the real the real story happened. So What do y'all remember about the post I write moment at Harrisburg? Yeah, um I think the biggest moment that I remember was Dana coming up and telling us like this was church for her. Mm. And she has spent um a lot of time like not being in church from her kind of like childhood um like experience being in a particular community that just like it didn't it started to not feel right for her Mm -hmm. so she stepped away but spent a long time not finding a community of family to be connected to um and I, i think just in general whenever we're able to create a space that people feel um feel welcomed in such an intimate way like we think about church as that space sometimes 
um, it, it really just affirms like the work that we're trying to do, which is essentially like going into these third spaces in order to meet and minister to people, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, she was saying that like, we were bringing tears to her eyes and you know, she's trying to look for a church now, all that kind of stuff. It yeah. was extremely powerful. Yeah, it was crazy. Like, it definitely did feel like church, even like after the fact, thinking about it, like it was like I I, I don't know, I kind of felt like the like the preacher of the hour, like, mm. you know, just kind of walking off and then talking talking with people and kind of connecting and like this this tour really gave an opportunity for people to experience God again, you know, and, and experience God in a way maybe they're not used to, you know, um, like, and, and we'll, we'll see in, in, in the next episode, just like pushing people to, to generosity, to like joy. Like there's just so much coming out of people. I remember talking to um, my uncle James, it's not actually my uncle, but he's my uncle. And he, um, he is just like so happy. He was like, "You did such a great job." But he's also just like, you could just see it on his face, like, and and he's someone that's been in the church for a long time. But I know he's kind of, um, has had the like grinded out version of church where you're just kind of like serving and serving and serving and serving. Mm. But for him to be like feeling the joy of of what this means and 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 other people getting to experience that and seeing it through poetry, something that they might not even understand fully. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Uncle James. He was super cool. I had a conversation with him afterwards, and um, you could tell he was very proud um, of you. And, and just the experience, I think it was good to hear different people's um, perspective and what they took away from it. Yeah. And I think, you know, some people were like, oh, this is great poetry. Some people were like, oh, I felt like this was definitely speaking to me in ways that, you know, I hadn't heard God speak in a, mo- in a while or, you know, I felt led to, like, join a community of believers. And so um, it was it was good to hear people's experiences and, and what really touched them and what they connected with. And I was like, this is, it was a good night to me. It's a great night. Yeah, I, th- I think... Uh- even not from necessarily like a deep, intimate conversation side, but there were a bunch. I think we all had those. Um, and some like details just aren't always appropriate to share on a podcast, you know, mm-hmm. but you're holding uh, space for stories to be shared and brokenness yeah. to be mm-hmm. um, articulated mm-hmm. and for prayers to be needed, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's that beautiful side of it. Um, without going into like specific details on some of those things that happened throughout the room. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also what was super interesting for me was the conversations with people coming up to us and being like, yo, how do we book you guys for opportunities because of what we experienced with you tonight? We want to have you back. Um, I have this event coming up. How can we book you? Um, we'd love to do this at our church. We'd love to do this at our other thing. And I think just from like the stewardship side of, you know, leadership and ripe creatives, you know, we invested resources to go on this tour from the generosity of our partners that allow us to do this stuff. And so we're leveraging money to go do this. Right. And, um, and it was free, right. It was, we didn't make any money off of this. We lost a lot of money on this, but like it was worth doing in general because of the ministry impact, but for God to kind of give me like a little glimpse of, that investment you guys made mm, is coming back, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. there will be things that'll come out of this that is going to even offset some of the fiscal risk that you took, yeah. right? Faith is spelled R-I-S-K, right? Like, so <laughs> we're taking risk and hoping that it pans out. Sergey's laugh. She's I like, that's not how you spell like, faith. Wait, faith is spelled what? <laughs> R-I-S-K. <laughs> That threw me uh, off. I was like, hold on. I know how to spell. It's like an old seminary thing. Gotcha. Uh, don't worry about it. But either way, like <laughs> that idea, like we took a risk. We stepped out in faith. We're hoping that God will provide and bless bless it. You know, some people bought some t-shirts for like $50 instead of $5, wow. you know. And so there's some financial, like this is a win. But then there's bookings that are coming out of it, or at least conversations for bookings coming out of it that you're like, Oh yeah, like this was dope. Like <laughs> this is turning into the next thing. Yep. Which I think has been our experience everywhere we go. Mm-hmm. Every time we go somewhere, somebody's like, "Come do this again at this other thing," For sure. which is a blessing. But it's even more 
palpable when it's the five, four of us in this room together. Yeah. It was such a different level yeah. of how good it really was that people were like, yo, we got to have you back like yes. immediately, not in a year to do this tour again, like next month, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that yeah. was really cool for me yeah. to just see the fruit mm -hmm. immediately in that sense yeah. that I did not expect to see yeah. while we were on the tour, you know? Yeah. And, and I think it also like helped achieve one of the goals we wanted was like, when we come out to these places, we want to see stuff flourish in these cities yeah. beyond what we can do. Yeah. So for people to say, oh, like we need to create an event so we can get these guys out there or we have an event that we're doing and we want to get them here so that we can further the kingdom in Harrisburg. We can further the yeah. kingdom through the arts. And so people having the same mission and then us just getting to be even a catalyst for that, even if it doesn't even happen, it's like we got to be the starter in their, in their minds and say, yes. you know what? This is important. This has to happen. So from a kingdom mindset of like even what they're going to do, it's really cool to get to have one night, but then that affect a lot more than just one night. For sure. Yeah, I mean, we are we're yeah. here because of people who did that for us. That's true. Yep. I'm yeah. only doing poetry today because of Amina Brown Owen mm. being on stage at Jubilee in 2009. That's real. Performing spoken word 2010. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. saw it for the first time, yeah. and I felt compelled to go do that thing. Didn't know how or how to get there, but good. without exposure. None of us are here. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. I could say with my experience, it was Ashley Clemens. And I was at a Bible study, honestly. Mm -hmm. And all I did was just like, I said something and she was like, something about your voice. And I was like, what? Wow. Like, you know what I mean? And wow. and I think from there, it was like, she's like, yeah, do you write poetry? I was like, no, nah, I mean, I write, but not really. That's right. And I think she just sparked an idea. And ever since then, like when I actually started putting pen to paper, I was like, oh, wow. Like God is really doing something through this. Definitely. And um, I was like, okay, I think this could add value. And I think once I recognized my voice, I was like, oh, I guess there there is something to it. So let me let me explore it. I literally like, I think it's like one of those things you discover it, right? Like you don't know necessarily always what you're called to do, but you discover it. Mm -hmm. And God has a way of revealing it to you to show you how you can make an impact in the kingdom. Yeah, And that's the beauty of this space that we yeah. created is there's people, they're having their Ashley Clement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or their Amina Brown moment. Yeah. At past the mic. That's tough. Yes. There's people in the room that are like, I feel drawn to do the thing that I just saw done. Literally. For me. Yeah. Which is just so sticky cool different. from yeah. like an impact multiplication of the gift that you carry in others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so there's like listen, y'all. If the thing that you do impacts somebody to do the thing that you do. There's very few things that are more sweet for yeah. sure. than that kind of moment that you get to experience. For sure. And that was some of the conversations we had in Harrisburg with people who were compelled and inspired Most to pick up pen for the first time, you know, yeah. which is so stinking dope. Um, shout out to y'all killing night one of Pass the Mic, Write Poetry Tour. Thank you guys for being on the first episode. We got to do this in a two-parter to talk about the other three dates. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. If you are here and you partner with us, uh, know that your partnership helped make Pass the Mic, Write Poetry Tour, Night One in Harrisburg happen. Your generosity is what allows us to go do this kind of stuff. And if you're here listening to this, you don't currently partner with us, please jump on ripecreators.com. Consider becoming a monthly partner. Give a one-time donation. The resources we receive allow us to go do stuff like this in more and more places, hopefully in the future. So um, we are going to pick this conversation up with episode two. And uh, whenever it drops, please give it a listen because it's going to be a great time. Uh, any final thoughts before we uh, we sign off into episode two of Pass the Mic about Harrisburg? Thanks for giving so we could go on tour in Harrisburg. Those steak rolls were overrated. Oh. The pretzel rolls. The pretzel rolls. Yo, you Hater. leave those pretzel rolls. Hater. Pretzel rolls. Cut nah. this. Cut this. No. Yeah, we're not, we're not <laughs> leaving this in the episode. <laughs> Listen, we'll see you on the next episode, part two, coming soon. We love y'all. Stay right. All of my doubts, all of my sorrows.